Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Erin, and my pronouns are she, her, and I am the student recruitment officer at the UBC Vancouver campus. I'd like to acknowledge the land that UBC has built its Vancouver campus on, which we work, learn, connect, and innovate is the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam peoples. This land has always been a significant place of learning, and it continues to provide that to us. Before we get started with all the content of the presentation today, I'd like to start by introducing my colleague, Chloe. Thanks, Erin. I'm Chloe. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the Events and Communication Coordinator at the UBC Vancouver campus. I'm also a Materials Engineering student at UBC Vancouver, and I moved here from Toronto, Ontario, where I grew up. I'd also like to introduce our colleague, Marie. Thanks, Chloe. So my name is Marie Reed, and I'm an engineering advisor for the School of Engineering from the UBC Okanagan campus. My pronouns are she, her. Um, UBC's Okanagan campus is situated on the territory of the Silex Okanagan Nation and their peoples. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of the lands that you are joining us from today. Back over to you, Erin. Thanks both. So you'll hear from both of them a little bit more throughout the presentation. Um, before we get started, I do want to let you know we will be using the Q&A today. So in the, if you have any questions that come up throughout the presentations, feel free to use the Q&A. We'll also have a lot of time at the end where you can ask myself, Marie or Chloe, any questions that you have about admissions, about the student experience, anything like that using the Q&A. We will also be using the chat today, so that will be coming up soon to kind of get you involved and so that we can get to learn a little bit more about you. Um, so keep an eye on that and listen in and I'll tell you when to use the chat and what to use it for. All right, so starting off today, I wanna to talk a little bit about what is engineering. Now in high school, you've probably taken some courses in math and physics, chemistry, or biology. Um, Right now, like I mentioned, we're going to use the chat to get a sense of what you know about engineering. So based on those science courses that you've taken in high school, can you conceptualize what it is that engineers do? So again, let's open up the event chat. I'll put in the question, what is it that you think engineers do? So feel free to add your answer to the chat of what some of the things engineers do. So design, innovate. Awesome. Those are great answers. Invent, find new ways to solve problems, plan, build and innovate designs, apply physics, use science and math to solve problems, uh, apply knowledge to real world problems. Amazing. Apply scientific principles. You guys are so smart. Thank you so much for contributing. Um, these are some really great answers. Analyze, create effectively. Uh, clearly, you all know what engineering is. So thank you so much for contributing to that. We'll touch a little bit more about what it is that engineers do, but then we'll also get into what you can expect from UBC engineering. All right. So these, yeah, like I said, are some really great answers. Um, there are lots of things that you use every day that engineers have invented or innovated or created. So just to get a sense of what's maybe your favorite thing that you use every day that an engineer has created, invented, or innovated that you interact with every day. Again, you can add this into the chat and I'll post the question in there as well. Computer, yes, you're probably, many of you are probably using phones or computers right now. Glasses, that's definitely useful. Uh, heated showers, that's great. Cold showers are no fun. Uh, engines, your lights that you might be using right now, a car, apps, spaceships. Spaceships are your favorite. That's, that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, bridges, house, pipes, microwave, roads, so many great answers. Some of the things that you might not think of that engineers do and create and innovate um, are things that some of our engineering professors are working on. So some things that you might not have thought of is things like concussion research in sports. So looking at ways of making sports better um, and safer for our athletes, creating clean drinking water, 
removing forever chemicals from our water and environment, or creating smaller, better batteries for cars and machinery. So you all had some great answers, um, and there's lots of great research related to all those things, as well as so much more at UBC. So the other question that I do get a lot, and it seems like you, a lot of you have a good understanding of this, is what is really the difference between scientists and engineers, or between your science courses and an engineering course? So scientists and engineers really have different goals. Scientists seek to describe and understand the natural world. Engineers consider various criteria and constraints in order to design solutions to problems, needs, and wants that will make the world better. So that includes our technology, our environment, and our medicine. When you're thinking of a scientist, so someone that's in life, natural and physical sciences, they're going to focus on attaining that fundamental knowledge about a subject through empirical and often quantitative methods. Those may sound like familiar things that you've done in many of your science classes, and a lot of your science classes are going to require you to do that empirical and quantitative method uh, to really learn and uh, get good grades in that course. An engineer's goal, on the other hand, isn't necessarily to discover new scientific principles, but it's by observing, um, but, but rather to apply the principles attained through scientific research to solve real world problems. So scientists really know the human body inside and out, but engineers are able to use that knowledge, figure out what's most relevant, and apply that knowledge to do things like mass produce vaccines or create bionic arms as a form of prosthetic, like what you see in the image here that some of our students created a few years ago. So now that you know a little bit more about what engineering is, I'll pass it over to Chloe to share more of what you can expect from the student experience at UBC Engineering. We are all so excited that you are considering UBC Engineering. There is so much for you to look forward to throughout your degree. UBC Engineering really fosters community, and right from the time you enter UBC Engineering, you'll have support systems like our first year orientations and have the opportunity to get involved with so many different clubs, which is a really great way to connect with your peers. UBC Engineering ensures that students are well supported so they can navigate their interests. And for instance, we have an engineering undergraduate society which organizes amazing events throughout the year and provides a space for you to connect with your peers and seniors who can talk about their journeys. They also offer amazing resources such as peer tutoring sessions for some of your key first year courses. Currently, I am very involved in the Undergraduate Society and can say that it has truly enhanced my degree here at UBC. So everyone I meet through the society is always very welcoming and generous enough to share their time with me and help me with a homework problem that I may be struggling with. The community within engineering is strong, and that may just be because of how rig rigorous engineering can be. Not to scare you, but students often bond by struggling through their homework and exams, but they always end up persevering together. As such, even before first year students begin their studies, they are put through an orientation program where they can meet other first year students. It has been said that friends from orientation often stay friends throughout their degrees, and I can testify to that as I currently live with two of my friends that I've met through orientation. You'll also have ample opportunity to join a club and find your own community on campus. For instance, there are many clubs for underrepresented groups, such as Gears and Queers for the LGBTQ community, women in engineering, and many more. There are also many other ways to find your community at such a big university like UBC through design teams or the more than 400 campus-wide clubs. So I'm actually on a design team and I just joined a campus-wide club called the Varsity Outdoors Club where they plan these really, really cool trips for backpacking, camping, climbing, skiing, and literally any outdoor activity that you can think of. I actually just went on one of their trips for outdoor rock climbing recently, and I'd never done rock climbing outdoors, but the instructors were really nice, taught me everything I needed to know, and everyone else in the group in the club was very welcoming. So clubs are a really great way to step outside of your comfort zone and try something new, or to find a community of people who love the same things you do. There is truly something for everyone here at UBC. At the Vancouver campus, there are over 30 design teams that enable students to work in teams, explore their interests, and gain hands-on experience right from their very first year. 
the design team that I'm on is Waste Not. So it's a sustainability focused design team that I joined in my second year. And through Waste Knots, I've been able to enjoy studying and developing kombucha leather, which is what happens when you let kombucha sit at room temperature and ferment, and then it forms a layer of bacteria. You take it out, hang it dry. It's a little funky, but it's some really cool science. And being on this design team has been a great opportunity for me to get some lab experience, while a lot of my courses currently don't have labs. At the Okanagan campus, there are also many design teams, clubs, and affiliated chapters to expand your network, find your community, and develop expertise in your field of study. So later on in your degree, you can also customize your studies by choosing to pursue a minor, which is a secondary area of study. This is not a requirement, but it will allow you to have a secondary focus if you are interested. You'll also have the opportunity to gain paid work experience through our co-op program, which you can apply into at the beginning of second or third year. And you may also consider going abroad to work, research, or study in your third year. There are honestly so many ways you can customize your own degree experience and write your own UBC engineering story. So I'm currently on co-op and it has been a really good stepping stone into the workplace and a change of scenery from all the homework and studying. I also have several friends who are doing minors in commerce and others who have done an international exchange and each and every one of them have loved how they've been able to customize their degrees. I've also considered studying abroad for a term and so UBC's international exchange programs offer really really great support to help you find the best place and term to do an exchange. And from the very start of your degree, you will be exposed to hands-on design projects where you'll work in teams with other first-year students. So in my first year, we built a cardboard chair and a robotic claw, and these projects were really great introductions to the engineering design process and good opportunities to work with my peers and improve my teamwork skills. You'll also have courses year after year that continue to build on those project-based design team learning experiences, and then this will ultimately lead to your final year's capstone design project, which um, the capstone design project is kind of the signature course for a lot of graduating students, and it's an opportunity for fourth-year students to kind of take everything they've learned in the classroom and work with their peers and industry partners to solve real-life engineering problems. One capstone that I really enjoyed learning about was a project where the group of students responded to a community outreach request from Caslow Outdoor Recreation and Trail Society. So Caslow was facing a unique combination of elements that required some serious engineering for a bridge. This project was also last year's winner of UBC Okanagan Capstone Design Project. And thanks to these students, Caslow will soon have an epic bridge to foster safe adventure and feature a plaque of the UBC engineering students who took home the coveted capstone trophy. A lot of our students will also get involved in research later in their degree. So there's the opportunity for paid research experience, or you can do it on your own with support, like support from clubs like the Undergrad Research Opportunities Club that provides students with access to mentorship and networking opportunities to get started in their own research. So now Aaron is going to join us again to chat a bit more about our programs. So welcome back, Aaron. Thanks so much for sharing more about the student experience, Chloe. So now we can jump into the programs that we offer at UBC. But before we do, let's take a quick look at our rankings. So UBC is the most international university in North America. It's also one of the top 40 schools in the world and a top school in Canada. Regarding sustainable development goals, UBC's overall ranking is 26 in the world. And we're ranked 13th for reduced inequalities. And our QS World Reputation ranking is 34 for all of UBC. Now UBC Engineering also ranks really well as an engineering program. We're currently ranked as the number two engineering program in Canada and the 25th top engineering program in the world. If you compare UBC engineering to some US engineering schools that you might be familiar with, UBC engineering ranks ahead of Cornell, Princeton, Columbia, Texas A&M, University of Washington, and many more. So we're very, very proud that UBC engineering has done so well and we continue to foster an amazing learning community at UBC engineering at both of our campuses. Now, UBC engineering is one program across two campuses. So you might be considering applying to the Okanagan campus in Kelowna, 
for the Vancouver campus. Just to give you a sense of where things are, the Okanagan campus is located in Kelowna, which is about a four and a half hour drive from Vancouver, or about a one hour flight. Now, regardless of which campus you decide to apply to, you'll start in the foundational first year to learn about the courses that are the foundation of your engineering degree. That's going to be your chemistry, physics, math, and English primarily. The foundation year is a unique opportunity to really explore all of the programs that your campus offers so that you can make the best decision on which program will be the best fit for you. The heart of our engineering foundation program is two engineering classes where you'll learn how to think like an engineer, use your problem solving skills and critical thinking skills to solve real world problems and challenges. Chloe mentioned that cardboard chair as one of those uh, projects that they do at the Vancouver campus. In those courses, you'll have weekly design studios to bring it all together uh, as you apply the knowledge that you're using in your other core classes to work on these engineering design projects. So engineering really has a lot to offer. And we've been talking so far about our Bachelor of Applied Science degree, which is the engineering degree at UBC. But I also wanted to take a moment to just kind of clarify what that means for you. So engineering is one of the few professional degrees that you can study upon direct entry to university. Many other programs will require a graduate degree uh, or an undergraduate degree before you can go into uh, the workforce. Sorry, it will require an undergraduate and graduate degree before you can go into the workforce, but engineering does not. So while you may find other schools with differently named degrees, um, it is just because there's no standard naming system in Canada. And like I said, at UBC, our engineering degree is called the Bachelor of Applied Science degree. You'll typically complete the engineering program in four years. And upon graduation, if you uh, or if you choose to complete our co-op program, uh, it would extend your degree to five years. And then upon graduation, you're fully equipped to join the workforce. Um, you're also equally equipped to take on graduate studies, uh, go into another professional degree like medicine or law, uh, or continue on and do, like I said, graduate studies, do a master's degree, do a PhD, do research, all sorts of different opportunities. Now, when you do graduate from engineering, you are what's called an engineer in training. To become a professional engineer, you'll need to work for about four years, although the co-op uh, program can count towards up to 12 months of this requirement. And then once you complete uh, some that work experience and completing the law and ethical requirements, you can then become a professional engineer. So that's kind of what your pathway may look like to working as an engineer in Canada. Now, in terms of what type of engineer you can be, we have so many different options available to students. So at the Okanagan campus, you'll choose the program that you're most interested in to continue into for your second year. And there are no caps on any of the programs at the Okanagan campus. At the Vancouver campus, there are 14 different specializations that we have that are shown on this slide. Students will apply for your discipline or your specialization at the end of your first year. Now at the Vancouver campus, you'll go through what's called the second year placement process, which is a competitive process to place you in the programs that you're ranking. Students at both campuses are gonna learn so much more about the placement process throughout their first year. Um, but hopefully this gives you a sense of all of the different programs. But again, you'll start in that foundational first year, which gives you so much time to explore all of the options available to you. So I know many of you wanna know a little bit more about admissions. So I'm going to pass it over to Marie to share more about how to get into UBC Engineering. Thanks, Erin. So like Erin said, now you've learned a bit about our programs. You have a little of that snippet of student experience from Chloe. So we're going to talk about that admissions process now. This is especially useful if you are maybe in grade 10 or 11 and you also want to do some future course planning as well. So there are several different pathways to enter UBC Engineering. Students can apply directly to either of the UBC Okanagan campuses from high school. Students can also choose to start their education at another post-secondary institution. This is a great option if you want to stay closer to home for your first year after high school or if you don't quite have the GPA to get into first year engineering at, at UBC. 
There are a few transfer programs that students can explore, including the engineering transfer program and the common first year transfer route. These programs allow students to complete their first year of engineering at a partner institution before transferring to UBC. There is also an option to attend a bridging program. These programs allow students to complete a technology diploma at a partner institution before transferring to UBC. You can check out more information about these programs on our web pages and get information such as GPA and timeline requirements for these transfer programs there. If you're an Indigenous student, UBC's Aboriginal Admission Policy aims to increase accessibility to Indigenous students. I recommend reviewing our Aboriginal Access Studies program and the UBC Langara Transfer Partnership, as, as these are additional pathways to study at UBC. Lastly, academically outstanding international students who do not meet the English language admissions requirement may still be admissible through the Vantage One program. So we've given you a lot of different admissions routes here. Today, we're gonna to be specifically speaking about admission requirements for students entering directly from high school. So high school students should plan to apply in their grade 12 year. We highly encourage you to, to apply before December 1st, but the final deadline to apply is January 15th. If you aren't in grade 12 yet, no worries at all. The following slides will still be very applicable because they're very helpful in planning out your high school courses. So next I'm gonna be talking about the specific requirements if you're interested in applying to the Bachelor of Applied Science at either UBC campuses. I'm gonna start off by talking about the Okanagan campus. Applicants will need to review the general UBC requirements first. So this is meeting UBC's English language requirement you need to graduate from high school, and it is recommended to take at least six courses at the grade 12 level. The Bachelor of Applied Science degree specific requirements at the Okanagan campus for students from BC are English 12, Pre-Calculus 12, Chemistry 12, and Physics 12. A full list of requirements can be found on our UBC admissions website, and this has additional requirements if you're outside of BC or in an international country. So next, I'm going to talk about the Vancouver campus requirements. The general requirements at the Vancouver campus are similar. However, there is an additional general requirement to meet a minimum of 70% in grade 11 or grade 12 English. The degree specific requirements are also slightly different. You'll notice that BC students applying to start in September 2025 at the Vancouver campus require a language at the grade 11 level. Another difference is that while you should plan to have both Chemistry 12 and Physics 12, you can be admitted with only one. If you are currently in grade 10 or younger or are planning to start the Vancouver campus in September 2026 or later, the only grade 11 courses that will be required are Chemistry and Physics. What is important to note is that the degree specific requirements are a checklist that will need to be completed by the end of your grade 12 year, but you do not need to have them completed before you apply. So for both campuses, UBC will also consider the type of courses you took in high school. So did you pursue all of your academic interests in a range of subjects? Did you challenge yourself by taking academic courses or first year university courses? Did you demonstrate knowledge in your chosen area of study by taking courses that are related to the, the, related to the degree you're applying to? While these components are not required for admission, they can strengthen a student's application. As a reminder, the degree specific courses we look for at both campuses were listed for BC students. If you're studying, uh, if you are not studying in BC, we encourage you to go to the website to see what your course equivalents will be. So now you might be wondering, how is my application assessed by UBC? Admissions is based on a combination of the personal profile and academic profile. So there's no specific grade that will ensure you get in. Depending on your, uh, sorry, spending time on your personal profile and doing well in all of your grade 11 and 12 courses will help you be the most competitive you can be for admission. 
Your personal profile will consist of your short essay questions on the application and will give you a chance to highlight your experiences that you have outside of the classroom. It should be more focused on reflection and what you've learned than the number of experiences you've had. We really want to learn about you. Your academic profile will look at both your overall and core academic assessment. These will consider all grade 11 and 12 academic courses, regardless of which year you took them. A focus will be on the grade 12 level courses if they're available at the time of assessment. The core courses will include all of the degree specific courses that we talked about earlier in the presentation, but will also include any other academic courses that fall into the categories of language arts, mathematics, and computation and scientists. So now I want to take a minute to talk about scholarships because this is a really big topic. We get a lot of questions about scholarship opportunities. So one of the main reasons we encourage applicants to apply by December 1st is so that you can be considered for certain scholarships. To be considered for merit-based awards, students will need to apply by December 1st and indicate that they would like to be considered for these awards. It's usually just a simple checkbox that you click off as part of your application. So you can see on this slide, we've listed the merit-based merit -based awards that students can review um, before they apply to UBC. For students in need of financial assistance, we also encourage you to submit the application to be considered for the Centennial Scholars Entrance Award and our Beyond Tomorrow Scholars Award for Black Canadian students. So really scholarships are your chance at free money. So it's really good to review them and see what you're applicable for. We also encourage students to apply to external scholarships. You can use keywords such as engineering, STEM, tech, and for female identifying students, you can search for things like women engineering and women in STEM. So I hope that's given you a good overview of our admissions process and scholarships. That's all for me for now. I'm going to pass it back over to Erin. Thanks so much for sharing all of that really important information, Marie. So before we wrap up the presentation, I just want everyone to think about, you know, listening to all of this, do you think that you would make a great engineer? So if you were to imagine a world without engineers, what would that look like? To me, that would be no buildings, no bridges, no cell phones, no life-saving devices, no medicine to heal us, no transportation. Life is really good in this moment, but engineers are working every day to make our lives better than what they are right now. Engineers improve our environment, our technology, and our medicine. They build solutions to solve our problems and make the world a better place. So if you want to work on a team to solve problems, then engineering might be for you. So thank you all so much for joining us today. The rest of the session is going to be open Q&A to get all of your questions answered. Uh, so I do see a lot of questions coming into the Q&A. You can also upvote those questions when we are going to address the most um, upvoted questions first. So if you see a question that you like that you want answered, go in there and click that thumbs up so that we can upvote it. I did see a couple questions kind of coming in throughout the chat. So we won't be using the chat for the duration of the presentation. So make sure that you do get your question into the Q&A so that we're able to answer that. We've also provided some of our great places that you can contact and look for more information here. I wanna mention a couple of them. So we have our main websites, of course, that you can check out. And the really long one that you see that ends with ask question, that is a great way to get connected with our current student ambassadors. So we have current engineering students from pretty much every program that we offer that you can connect with and start an online chat with to ask more about uh, what their program is like, what the student experience is like, um, and what their experience has been so far. They also have their profiles so that tells you what design teams they've been a part of, what extracurriculars they've done. So you're welcome to ask them anything about the student experience. They will not be able to answer anything about admissions for you, but they are a really great resource to learn more about their program or the student experience. We also have our truly fantastic engineering stories team. So they are on a break for the summer. We'll be hiring uh, more students to be a part of this team in the fall. Um, but our engineering stories team has posted lots of really amazing YouTube videos, Instagram reels, and TikToks all about what life is like 
as an engineering student at UBC from both campuses. Finally, if you do have questions after today, you can see the emails for both the Okanagan campus and Vancouver campus here about any questions that you may have about engineering. So if you have questions about the Okanagan campus, you can contact soe.advising at ubc.ca. Uh, and for the Vancouver campus, you can contact outreach at apsc.ubc.ca to have any of your questions uh, about UBC engineering answered. So I'll leave this screen up for just a couple more minutes just so that you can get any of those down. And we will jump in to our Q&A. So again, a reminder to use that Q&A feature, which is where we're going to focus on and to update and to upvote those questions that look most interesting to you because I will be sorting by most upvotes first. So the first and most upvoted question that we have is what are recommended extracurriculars and things in high school um, that you should do in order to be accepted into the program? So it's a really great question. We get that a lot. Chloe, maybe you want to share kind of what some of the things you were involved in in high school that you maybe remember including in your personal profile way back when you wrote about it, if you remember that. So I did a decent amount of extracurriculars, not saying you have to do all of them. Um, I used to do dance, uh, swimming, acting. Um, I also was in an arts program, so I talked a lot about that. And then for my school, they had like STEM club, um, kind of an extracurricular um, was like student council. I just like being involved, not saying you have to do all of this, but like um, if you do do an extracurricular, make sure it's something that you really enjoy doing. Um, or you find could like uh, just benefit you in some other way. You don't want, like, I wouldn't recommend picking an extracurricular just for the sake of writing about it in your personal profile. Um, you can kind of like, when they read it, they can tell it's like, if it like comes from your enjoyment or not. Um, so everything I did, I generally enjoyed. And then I just wrote about that. Awesome. Thanks, Chloe. So in your personal profile, and you can find all of the personal profile questions listed on the you.ubc.ca website. Um, and so you can look at those now uh, to start writing them if you're super keen on that. You're welcome to start writing them. And what we're going to ask is things like, what's important to you? What activities have you been involved in? And asking you to pick a couple of those activities to speak more about. So with those we're not looking for necessarily what you've done, but just how you reflect on that or your introspection into your experiences outside of the classroom in high school. So thinking about, you know, maybe you didn't have time to volunteer because you had a part-time job. Maybe you had to take care of younger siblings. Um, maybe you had to work for your family company. Maybe you had to, um, maybe you did get to volunteer for things, but it wasn't necessarily engineering focus. Those are all totally okay to use and to share. Um, but what we want you to think about is how have those experiences led to who you are now? How have they shaped who you are as a student? And how will they shape your future? Maybe you have experience, um, you know, working a part-time job and you know that you want to do something better and more amazing and go into something like engineering, then just continue to work kind of a simple job. So maybe that's part of your experience, but there's no one right answer. And we're not looking for one specific thing, but we're looking about how you can reflect on your experiences in your personal profile. Uh, another similar question, what are some ways that you can show knowledge of engineering in high school to strengthen your application? Again, we're not necessarily looking for anything other than those required courses that Marie showed. Um, if you do have experience, if, you're, if your high school does offer things like a computer science class or a robotics class or things like that, those are definitely courses that you can take and that you can speak to about. But your personal profile is really asking for what you've done outside of the classroom and not necessarily the courses that you've taken. So in your... Uh, academic profile that we're looking at. We're looking at your overall grade 11 and grade 12 academic courses, and we're looking at your grade 11 and grade 12 core courses. So if you've taken other courses that are related to engineering, those can be considered if they are academic courses, but it's not a requirement either. A question about what was the benchmark score last year to get into the UBC engineering program? So again, we always get this sort of question about grades, and unfortunately, it's really hard to answer. So 
as Marie mentioned before, we're looking for kind of those three components, your overall academic average, your core academic average, and your personal profile. And that's going to be different for every student. Um, and that is not going to be a straight up uh, grade that we're looking for because that personal profile comes into play. So it's really hard to give an exact number for that. Uh, for students coming into the Vancouver campus, I would say to aim in the 90s. Um, but it's hard to give an exact average for that. The Okanagan campus is able to, um, is still expanding and able to accept a few more students. So they might have a little bit of a lower average that you can get in with because we have more space um, available for students there. So that kind of gives you a little bit of uh, something to aim for, but it depends on where you're currently studying and it depends on so many other factors than just your uh, overall average. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Erin, I see there's a great question in here related to how does the course load of the engineering program compare to one of general science? But I thought maybe it'd be nice for Chloe to talk a little bit about the workload and how she manages her workload. And then we could talk about the program stuff after. <laughs> yeah. Chloe, if you don't mind yeah. sharing your experience with workload. Sure. First year, it definitely seemed a bit more challenging than it did for me uh, this past year because I just finished my second year. But that has to do with the fact that uh, I moved here from Toronto, completely new environment, was living on residence, all of that. So there was a lot to balance. Um, and then, yeah, most like some new content, everything. Um, I was generally able to do it, but I limited my extracurriculars in first year to make sure that I was focusing enough on school and I ended up doing pretty well and then because I figured out how to study properly and then like what worked best for me I was able to get a lot more involved this year and um, my grades have remained pretty much the same so there were like a couple of challenging times like especially the first um, midterm season but if you have a great um, group of peers to study and work through problems with, uh, there's, yeah, I ended up getting through it and um, I'm really proud of how I ended up doing in first year. That's really great, Chloe. And I, I um, like how you mentioned your study groups because I find that so important to build those study groups. So you have that support throughout your, the coursework and all the different homework, um, but a little bit more into like the program at the Okanagan campus students if you're in the four-year degree plan you'll be taking six courses per term um, so that's usually one more course than what you would see in the faculty of science depending on what program you're in um, at the Okanagan campus, we do have an option for students to take a five-year degree program, and that's where we created a schedule. You take five courses per term. We do find a lot of students take up that, um, that five-year degree, and that's because of like what Chloe mentioned. You want to be doing extracurriculars. Either you're working or you're joining a club or um, you might be doing research. So it just gives you a little bit of flexibility in your schedule to do those things outside of your courses. I don't know, Erin, if you want to add anything yeah. for Vancouver. Um, pretty similar. So at the Vancouver campus, you're expected to take about six courses per term. Uh, it'll fluctuate a little bit depending on your year level, depending on the program that you're in. Um, and so that is one more course per term than the regular kind of full time schedule for uh, something like science students. Um, but yeah, otherwise, everything is pretty much the same as what Marie mentioned and Chloe gave a great description of kind of what that sort of workload looks like. Um, I do see a few questions kind of asking about AP and IB and we didn't touch on those too much so I will address those quickly. So if you are taking uh, AP courses or if you are taking partial IB, those are generally considered very similarly. Typically for a lot of Canadian students, those uh, AP or IB courses will also have an in-class grade associated with them. That's part of the regular curriculum that you would take. So you may be taking an AP math course, but you're still gonna have your pre-calc 12 or calculus 12 um, in BC essentially, whatever that sort of equivalent course is. So we'll typically use those in-class uh, grades if they're available at the time of assessment. Otherwise, the advantage for IB and AP courses is that you can get first year credit if you're scoring high on those uh, final exams that you write. 
Because we're using what's available at the time of assessment, a lot of students don't write their AP or IB exams until after that point in their grade 12 years. However, if you are writing your AP or IB exams in grade 11 at all, um, you definitely can have those results sent to us so that that can be considered as part of your assessment. Now for students doing the full IB program, you are going to be considered based on your predicted IB scores that your IB coordinator will have to send in to UBC. And so we'll look at these scores, um, those predicted grades uh, for IB and assess you based off of those. So that's kind of a little bit more information again on our UBC website site that tells you all of the requirements. It lays all of that out a little bit more in more detail, but hopefully that kind of uh, answers that. For the one question about does an AP course count as a grade 12 course, typically it will. Um, again, you can look on the requirements if you are studying AP, it gives you a list of those required AP courses. Um, but again, just checking what those uh, equivalent courses would be for a kind of in-school courses. And there's a question about if taking AP or IB or A-levels would give you an advantage for getting into UBC. Um, and it's not necessarily going to give you an advantage, but it will show us that you are able to take uh, more difficult courses because those tend to be more difficult than the regular curriculum. So it will be part of the full consideration, um, but a student's not going to be disadvantaged for not taking a uh, AP or IB courses, for example. So um, if you're interested in that course and you like it, definitely take it, but it's not a requirement to take those AP and IB courses. All right. Um, does UBC tend to not like courses taken in the summer for the reach ahead or does it not matter? I'm not sure what the reach ahead is, um, but we do take summer courses. Those are acceptable as long as they're part of the kind of regular curriculum that you are studying. You're welcome to take summer courses. The cutoff will be that your courses need to be complete by your uh, by June of your grade 12 year. So courses taken after June of grade 12 would not be considered as part of the admissions process. Question about aerospace engineering. So we do have an aerospace um, option at the Vancouver campus uh, that is part of mechanical engineering. And we do have an aerospace concentration that is part of mechanical engineering. Um, at the Okanagan campus. So that is still an option that you can take. It wouldn't be a full specialization, but you can still focus on aerospace at both campuses. Erin, I see there's a question here asking about the variety of courses between the Okanagan campus and the Vancouver campus. So I just wanted to address that. Um, so that's a really great question. Like Erin mentioned earlier, both campuses, if you're at engineering, you have that foundational first year. And that's where you're taking that time to learn about those courses that are the foundation of your, of your degree, like chemistry, physics, math, and English. Um, and that's the same for both campuses. In second year, that's when you're gonna go be going into your specific program and your courses are gonna be specific to the program that you have selected. The quality of the degree you're getting, regardless of campus, is the same. You're still a part of the Faculty of Applied Science, which is a program or basically a department across both campuses, and the program is the same across both campuses. What you might notice some variety is, is when you get into um, your fourth year elective courses, you may see differences between the Vancouver and the Okanagan campus. And that's typically because those courses are related to the expertise of the professors who are teaching the courses um, in those program areas. So I highly recommend that you look um, into sort of the main focus areas of mechanical engineering at the Okanagan or Vancouver campus to see if that's matching with your alignment of what you're hoping to get out of civil or mining engineering or things like that to make sure that is what you're looking for. The only other thing is the professors, a common question we get, the professors are both great at, at both campuses who teach these courses. Um, there is research opportunities with their professors as well. So if you're looking at um, either campus, you're going to get the same quality degree and you're going to have the same UBC transcript when you graduate as well. Erin, did I miss anything on that? I don't think so. I think that was a great answer, Maria. Perfect. So maybe there's a question here about housing. I don't know, Chloe, if you want to maybe answer that question. I don't know if you were in residence in your first year and um, what's yeah. what uh, had taken you afterwards, but maybe if you could share your experience. For sure. Uh, yeah, I was on 
sorry, in uh, residence in my first year. And so if you apply before a certain deadline, um, don't remember the exact date, but the information is on the website, you will be guaranteed first year housing. And there's like three main areas. It was a really nice experience. Um, also didn't have to cook at the time because <laughs> they have the dining halls. Um, and then you get a nice community with the people who live on your floor. And now I am off campus, so I commute. It's not too far. Um, so I've experienced a bit of both. The nice thing about being on residence is that I can wake up like 20 minutes before my class and make it to class on time. But then the campus is kind of like its own little hub. So being off campus, I've gotten to actually explore Vancouver a lot more, which I really like because I'm not from here. Awesome. Thanks, Chloe. Um, looking through a few more questions. So again, we're going to try and answer as many as we can, but a reminder to upvote those questions that you see, um, cause I am seeing a lot of duplicate questions. So if you're reading through and just checking out those questions, um, then we can answer some of the most upvoted questions. So again, uh, another admissions question of what if you do better in your grade 12 courses than your grade 11 courses, that's great. Again, we're looking at what's going to be available at the time of assessment. So for most students, that's going to be what's available to us in March that are final courses. And so that's typically going to be what you've done in grade 11 and your first term of grade 12. Um, so grade 11 is going to be important, but grade 12 is definitely going to be considered if those are available at the time of assessment. Um, for students studying in BC, uh, who are entering, planning to enter UBC at Vancouver campus uh, this coming, or the next September, so applying this coming fall for entry in September 2025, you would need to have a second language at the grade 11 length level. Um, there's not a certain number of years that is required as long as you have that grade 11 level course. Um, for students entering September 2026 or later, you will not need that requirement any longer. Uh, a question about can you apply for both campuses? So we didn't jump too much into the application process. You will see we'll have lots more online presentations happening uh, in the fall around when uh, our application is open. So the application will open in October and Marie mentioned those deadlines. So December 1st is that first round offer deadline. January 15th is that final deadline. When you apply, you can put two different choices on your application. So that could be both campuses. That could be applying to Bachelor of Applied Science at the Okanagan campus and the Bachelor of Applied Science at the Vancouver campus. That could be science and Bachelor of Applied Science, both at the Okanagan campus or any sort of combination in there. We're always going to assess your first choice program first um, and then move on to your second choice if uh, you're not admissible to your first choice at that point in time. So you can definitely put both campuses. I see there's a question here, Erin, about joining a design team or an engineering club. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if Chloe may be able to share a little bit about how did you figure out that they existed and how you applied or not maybe applied or how you decided which one to choose and um, how you were able to join those clubs? Yep, for sure. Uh, so yeah, the question is when did the applications open? So generally they should be open in September. Some design teams will have them open in August. That's dependent on the team. So they each have their own websites um, and you can look at the exact dates there. I found out about design teams through Imagine Day, which is a day that kind of replaces what would officially be like first day of classes. And so each of the clubs and de design teams have a booth down um, Main Mall, which is this big stretch of um, like walkway in the middle of campus. And then you can just go around, look at all the clubs, talk to the people in the clubs, see what they're about. Um, and they'll give you a bit more information on their application um, process and deadlines. Design teams, um, generally they'll all have applications. Clubs, not necessarily. You can just sometimes just sign up and join. They might have a small fee, others are free. Others like for the dance teams might have tryouts. It, really just depends on the club, but you can just go and talk to them and find out more. 
Thanks, Chloe. That's great. It's very similar for the Okanagan campus as well. Those processes um, are first day is called create, same idea. And throughout the week, there's usually some sort of club fair. So really great to just take a take a little bit of time out of your day to go explore those, see what you're passionate about. And, you know, clubs and design teams are a really great way to apply the knowledge you're learning in class. But it's also a great way to make friends and take a break from your studies um, and just do something that you're passionate about outside of class. Thanks both. Um, so there is another question asking a little bit more about um, working abroad, studying abroad, um, and things like that. So Chloe, in kind of having looked into that or knowing friends that have done that um, program, are there um, specific countries that they've gone to that you know about or countries that you are considering um, or anything else that you want to share with a student that might also be considering uh, either studying or working abroad in the future? Yeah, sure. So there's the UBC Go Global program, which is the like for all of the university, their international exchange program. And then there's um, coordinated international exchange, I believe, CIE. So that's more specific for engineering. So it just helps because um, with the engineering course load, um, you have to fit a lot in there. So that program helps to make sure that you stay on track and don't have to extend your degree. And I think with both of those there is a list of locations. So for the CIE program, there's a couple of places in Asia, I believe Singapore, um, Europe. So I know the friend that I went, went to Switzerland and then they also have Australia. So I was looking into that. Um, but you can also, uh, if you see courses at a university, um, you may be able to go talk to them and request that you do an exchange. Um, or if you see courses at one of their listed partner institutions, you can just go and take that rather than having to take the courses that they have on their site. Um, I believe that's more accurate. I'm not 100% sure about going to a place that's not listed. Go Global may be more flexible with that. Yeah, so we have the Coordinated International Experience Program that has 17 different partner institutions that are all engineering programs that a student can study at. But like Chloe mentioned, there's also Go Global. So if you really have certain locations set in your mind that you'd like to go to, you may also be able to go abroad through the Go Global program. And both of those are experiences available to our engineering students. Um, and then if you'd like to work abroad, that would really be through the co-op program. So like uh, Chloe mentioned, she's currently on a co-op right now. Um, co-op allows you to get paid work experience as part of your degree. It's available to students at both campuses. It's actually the same office that functions across both campuses for engineering. Um, and there are a lot of students that may go to countries like Germany or Japan uh, or the U.S., for example. Now, in doing that, you would need to get the work visas and things like that. that You may need to work in those locations, um, but it is an opportunity that you can get some work experience while being abroad, while in university as well. So lots of opportunity to really see the world while you're still in university. Related to that, I also see a question about if you get a degree at UBC, can you work as an engineer in the USA? Um, and the answer is probably, it depends on you and the requirements that that job may have. Uh, but for most Canadian students wanting to work in the US, you would need to write the fundamentals of engineering exam. Canadian students have quite a high pass rate on that exam because our curriculum is so comprehensive. And then again, the other piece would be whether you have a work visa, whether a company is hiring you um, so that you can work there and that sort of thing is obviously a little bit different. But in terms of working as an engineer in the U.S., Canadian students definitely are able to if you're meeting those requirements. We do have a reciprocal agreement um, with ABET through the Washington Accord uh, for most Canadian institutions. We also have a lot of alumni that have gone and uh, worked throughout Europe, throughout Asia as engineers. So UBC is an internationally recognized degree and that degree will be recognized no matter where you go. Because engineering is a regulated professional position, many countries will have different requirements of what you need to officially be an engineer in that country. And so you'll need to look into those requirements. But we have students that go all over the world to work uh, once they're done their degree. So that wouldn't be an issue. See if you, I'm going to skip over some questions that we've kind of already answered. So I'm going to try and skip past those. 
I do see a quick question about Calculus 12 or equivalent. So Calculus 12 is not a required course, but we do recommend it. Um, and if you are taking it, it would just be part of your average calculation uh, for the courses that you're taking in grade 12 and part of that admission assessment. Um, but in first year, you do have to take calculus. And so our, many of our students highly recommend having taken calculus in high school, if that's a possibility for you, because it will make that first year class easier. But it is not a requirement for admission to either of our campuses. Erin, I see there's a few questions about the cost of first year. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to share in the chat with any, everybody the first year cost calculator, which is a really great tool that UBC has created. Um, it will help you sort of estimate your tuition costs, living costs, and things like your cell phone bill, food, to give you a really good idea of how to budget for your first year. Um, so I'm just going to put that into the chat so everyone receives that. There is also a question, Chloe, I saw in there about food on campus. Do you want to share? I don't know if you have like a favorite spot to eat on campus or your go-to coffee shop, but nice to hear some insight about the food on campus. Yeah, for sure. Dining hall food, I have my reservations about, as you will hear from many. Um, some days were very, very good. Um, and they had like this fancy wonton soup and then other days less so it so it really depends um but then there are tons of other food options so currently my favorite is steve's poke bar so it's this uh little poke bowl place where you can just customize um the poke bowl there's lots of coffee shops um there's a subway a booster juice in one of the buildings that i have a lot of my classes in and then um there's also the Student Nest, which is this big student hub, and there's little convenience stores and then lots of other kind of like more like actual food areas below. And so that's been a really good place for me to just get food on campus if I'm a little hungry. Thanks so much for sharing. That's great. It's always nice to like know some of maybe the places that aren't as advertised as widely on the website to, to kind of showcase the different type of cuisines and the different things you can grab on the go between your classes. Um, I've seen questions, another Aaron. question about housing. Um, so just um, is if is there affordable student housing options after first year? Um, so like I said, I live off campus, but you can apply to year round housing with student residents, and I would recommend applying to that as you apply to UBC because the wait list is really really long, but that is fairly affordable and. Um, there's many different options like a studio, one bedroom, four bedroom. And then with that, there's also always winter housing. However, that is always lottery. So um, I'd recommend doing for second year, ap applying to both, but having your name on the wait list before you even start first year for year round housing. That's a great recommendation and such a common question that happens. So it's nice to have that advice to just apply right away because, yeah, after first year, it's not guaranteed. Um, at both campuses, there is um, housing that's close by, but it's not residence um, like what a lot of first year students will be living in. So really will depend on where you're at at that point. But it's always nice to have the option if you apply right away. Um, so I see there's a few questions about co-op in here, Erin, as well. I know we mentioned a little bit before. Um, I'm happy to put the co-op um, link in the chat. Like Erin mentioned, the co-op programs across both campuses, you can um, go or apply for co-op in the beginning of your second or third year of a study. Really great way to get work experience, to get paid throughout your degree. Chloe shared her experience as well. Um, typically a minimum of four work terms. Um, a lot of students can do five work terms. Students can work locally. They can go internationally. So I'll put the, the link in the chat if you're interested to look into that more, but really great opportunity. The one thing to keep in mind is it does add a year onto your degree, but like Erin mentioned earlier, up to 12 months could be um, applied towards your engineer and training status. Um, so we're just about out of time. So I'm just looking to see uh, if there's any other questions that stand out. Again, I think we've answered most of them. There's a few that I'm skipping over that are very, very specific. So if you didn't have your question answered today, definitely feel free to reach out by email. 
um, so that we can get in touch with you because some of them I'm seeing I would need a little bit more information from you in order to answer those questions. So apologies if I am skipping over them. Um, there's a couple of questions that I'm seeing about um, tuition costs and related to whether you're an international student or not. So just to clarify for that piece, if you are a Canadian student or if you have permanent residency status, you would be assessed domestic tuition. Um, if you are an international student or here on any other sort of visa, you're typically going to be assessed international student tuition. Uh, in some cases that may change for you. So you may get permanent residency while you're a student or throughout the application process. And if that's the case, you just need to let us know so that we can adjust that for you. Oh, another great question, but what's the proportion of international students at UBC Engineering um, in our program? So at the Vancouver campus, about 30% of our uh, first year is international student or close to that. Um, we also have about 30% of our uh, first year students as women as well. So just a little breakdown of the Vancouver campus. Marie, do you wanna share uh, kind of what that looks like at the Okanagan campus? Yeah, sorry, I just was typing our emails into the chat there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, no worries. Uh, at the Okanagan campus for international students, we're looking closer towards that 20% mark. And for female identifying students, um, we're around 18% at the Okanagan campus right now. Um, we do have uh, a lot of community supports for our female identifying students. We have an amazing women in engineering club. Uh, we have a women in tech club. And so we do have a really strong community or support system for underrepresented groups. And um, from just anecdotally talking to our international students, they're able to find their community on campus, uh, which is really great. So I'm one of the things I do love about both of our campuses is really the diversity that we have and the support that we have among students. And I think some of that was clear in sort of what Chloe shared today as well. So before we wrap it up for today, um, we did post both of the emails that you can reach out to. So again, it's soe.advising at ubc.ca if you have questions about the Okanagan campuses engineering program. If you have questions about the engineering program at the Vancouver campus, it is outreach at apsc.ubc.ca. So those are both posted into the chat if you need that. Um, last thing, Chloe, uh, to have you kind of sign off for us, if you think back to yourself in grade 12 or grade 11 even, considering kind of where you were going to go to school, what that looked like, what sort of pieces of advice would you give to your past self or to the students watching here today when they're kind of making those choices of where they're going to apply to, what school they're going to attend, um, whether they should even study engineering? What sort of advice would you have given yourself back then? That's a tough question. Um, yeah, so I guess Thinking back to what I was thinking at that time, I kind of considered like what I enjoyed doing um, and like what I enjoyed studying in school. So I've always liked science and math. And then I was like, well, I also like making things. So that's why I kind of leaned more towards engineering. And then where I wanted to study, a bit of that had to do with where I wanted to live for the next four, five, whatever years. So um I could have lived at home, which would have been really nice, or even somewhere else. Um, but a big factor of me coming to UBC really was the campus. Um, another thing that I would consider um, and that I didn't really delve deep into is all the other opportunities like the clubs and the de design teams, because there were so many things that I didn't even discover until this year. But really, it's just kind of like sitting back, making a list of like, what do you like doing? Um, like what the program offers. And then if you want to look even further into the future, like what you think you could do after with that? Because I, to be honest, I don't really know what I want to do with my life generally. Um, a bit scary, but one of the reasons why I picked UBC engineering is because with an engineering degree, I feel I can still kind of do anything really. Amazing. Thank you so much, Chloe. And thank you so much, Marie, for being here today. I really appreciate both of your help with the presentation today and answering all of these amazing questions that we've had. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching, um, whether it is morning, evening, or afternoon that you're joining us from. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. 
Again, reach out to us via email if you have any further questions. Chat with our ambassadors if you have more questions about the student experience. Um, and we hope to see you potentially at some of our fall events coming up uh, in a few months time. So thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.